Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alfred Lavery. I'm a citizen of the United States. I live in Brooklyn. Thank you, council members, for hearing my voice today. I'd also like to say thank you to Robert Lederman, who has emailed me on the updates of this hearing. I'd also like to say thank you to the citizens of New York City for being here. And a very special thank you to the veterans who have given me the right, because of their fight, to speak here. I'd also like to thank all the immigrants who showed up today, trying to find their own right as entrepreneurs who seek employment in America. I was laid off about one year ago from my job. This is the first time I've been to one of these hearings. When I walked into this chambers here, I was amazed at the architecture. When I looked up at the ceiling and I read, a government of the people, by the people, for the people. By Abraham Lincoln, I thought, what would Mr. Lincoln think about stopping our rights to become entrepreneurs? Now there are too many laws for me to go into that you want to pass. To, to cover all of them, I can't do it. But what Mr. Barron said earlier today, that he would like to see the limit raised to 25,000, he's absolutely right, we might have to go higher. We need to think about what's going on in our country right now. We have an economic crisis that we haven't seen since the Great Depression. I am not being bailed out by a $700 billion bailout package. All I'm asking for is a right to show my arm on the street. It's getting very tough right now. Mr. Gershon says the law is not being enforced. Well, they are, Mr. Gershon. Here's a ticket that I received. It's frivolous. I'll fight it in court, and I'll probably get another one and another one. But we need to be open-minded and think out of the box for employment opportunities for people that are being laid off because the numbers are not getting smaller, they get larger. I just, I'm, I'm a little upset right now because we don't need new laws. We need more opportunities for people like myself that are getting laid off. Um, Again, thank you for everybody that's more for my right to be here. Press table who left this hearing already. 
The New York Times is sold by independent newsstand operators, by vendors on street corners employed by publishers in coin-operated vending machines that occupy sidewalk space day and night, 24-7. The New York Times and other publishers enjoy three times the number of vending opportunities on any given block than I do as an independent vendor of written matter. If an independent vendor of written matter or art or photography is removed from a block by any of Mr. Gerson's eight proposals or the other 12 that he has under consideration or the other 14 that he's put up here in the last years, under a fair interpretation of the law, and I'll repeat that. Under a fair interpretation of the law, the New York Times and all other vendors of written matter would need to be similarly removed. I'm going to conclude with a different ending than the one I've given you. I'm looking up at the ceiling of Lincoln's quote here, a government of the people, by the people, for the people. And I want to tell you, gentlemen and ladies, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that what Alan Gerson has put together in the seven years, this mess of new laws, is basically a fusion of the beginnings of corporate power and police power. When you put together a corporate state and a police state, you have the beginnings of the doorway to fascism. Benito Mussolini didn't hesitate to walk through that doorway, and I'll tell you, Alan Gerson isn't either hesitating. If he was here, I would tell him to his face that I think he's a disgrace to the office he holds. Thank you.